Hello, friend. I couldn't help but notice that barbarian tribes and evil gods from the north are attacking the forces of so this. Indeed. Perhaps now that the mightiest military power in the world is under threat, us normal Footlands can finally rise to world relevance. Howdy, Footland servants. Check it out, my sword is Mother of Dragon Bones. T. Nemesis. It is amazing indeed. Divine weapons are a very valuable commodity. You are very powerful and I have no choice but to submit to my servile instincts and become your vessel. I totally didn't have any plans for independence or world relevance by the way. Some centuries later. Finally, after many years of subservience to Suros, we have secured a piece of territory for myself and my Fidland subjects. Even though this feat was only possible after my superior subjugated died, I consider my achievement a superhuman feat. Praise the Goddess. I will finally world relevance by becoming the most loyal servant of Rhea and giving her all my money. T. Dimitri. Please excuse me. I couldn't help but notice your definition of the Goddess greatly differs from my own. I am also of the belief that the church is corrupt and therefore should not receive our support. I will now engage in petty squabbles so my vision of an abstract concept becomes the most relevant. T. Edelgard. And bus, for almost a millennium, Fodlan nobility fought amongst themselves. All of this in a desperate bid to prove which of them is more relevant and rule over all of Fodlan. And because they couldn't handle any banter, the serious discussion became a joke. Fodlan was the laughing stock of the whole of the continent and beyond. Kek 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 kek. As for the rest of the world, the people of Magvel united to seal the Demon King and coexisted in peace under the tutelage of a new generation. They called it the Kingdom of Renais. The people of Illus defeated the evil of Grima and united in their love of the divine dragon Naga. They called it the Halidom of Illus. The people of Rigel and Sophia united under one banner to bring their people into a bright new future. They called it Valencia. The people of Bern overcame the scars of their past sins and united with other nations to atone. They called it Elibi. Even the people of Hosito and Nor eventually listened to the weirdo incest brother and killed some insane dragon or something. But even in a pseudo race with a genetic pool as hopelessly polluted as the Fodlan, there is still a chance for the birth of the kind of prodigy that only appears once every thousand years. Finally, it happened. This statement alone caused a breakthrough in Fodlan thought. Led by this genius rhetoric, any Fodlans under his sway were united as one. With inflated egos, the Empire decided to declare war against the rest of Fodlan. The Empire fought this war quite seriously, exterminating anyone in their path and using all sorts of underhanded tricks. They were dead set on world domination. But the rest of the world wasn't taking it so seriously. They could have easily solved all their fantastical and secular conflicts had they stooped half as low as Fodlans. But as humanists, they didn't want to deprive future generations from observing one of nature's most hilarious mistakes. The area had long been sealed off and all area within was declared a Fodlan reservation. Where Fodlans could upkeep their unique customs and culture. But their biggest mistake in the past had been their defiance to Almira. Almira. The mere muttering of this name is enough to drive any Fodlan into a spastic fit. Almirans sought only to be a nation independent and living their lives to the fullest. They became an honest nation with noble kings and queens ruling justly. They unified their own continent and rose as a world authority after establishing friendly relations on equal terms with other kingdoms around the world. They achieved all of this in less than 200 years. Almirans represent everything that Fodlans wish they were. The funniest thing about it is that Almirans were never aiming towards becoming a military power. They reached it as a side effect of being courageous, hard-working people worthy of trust. Almirans are a brave people by nature and so they could not stand by and witness such tragedies committed by the most ignoble of people. They prepared to make battle with the Empire, but even so. The Empire, Kingdom, and Alliance have ruined this country with their fighting. 
This is obviously the Church of Saros's fault. The Almirans were too late to save a descendant of the goddess. The death of Lady Rhea lives on is one of the most tragic events in human history, as well as the Empire's only deed of note. But Almirans frequently succumb to one of their few vices, eagerness to forgive. And after knowing the suffering people under kingdom and empire rule are subject to, mercy grabs the hand of righteousness. Yet we have the strength to scale the walls between us, to reach out our hands in friendship so we can open our true hearts to one another. In the end, it had to be a non-Fodlan unifying Fodlan. Never forget the past or risk repeating it.